So you build endurance when you keep going at the point you want to quit. Now we're gonna dive together into the book of Hebrews and the writer to the Hebrews, you've gotta remember, was writing to the Jewish Christians who are under a time of incredible trial and persecution. Now, many of these guys had wondered if they had made the right decision to become Jesus followers because of all the persecution that they were suffering. And they were tempted to go back to, to the safe haven, haven of traditional Judaism. They thought, you know what? If we go back, our families are gonna like us, our friends are gonna like us, our employers are gonna like us. They had lost all of their rights, all of their privileges, all of their stature in society by becoming Jesus followers. And it was just too costly. And so many were going back and just going, look, I, I think I'm just gonna go back because it was a lot easier. So the writer to the Hebrews was encouraging them to stand firm in their faith. And I love it because he uses athletic imagery. He wrote in Hebrews 12 verses one to three, therefore, since we also have such a large cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance, the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the source and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before Him, He endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I love this so much. It goes on to say, consider Him who endured from sinners such hostility against Himself so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted so that you may not grow weary or faint hearted. Now, this passage of scripture, it paints, it paints a picture of a grandstand full of people who are not spectators, but witnesses. You know, when you go to the football, when you go to a sporting event, event and they're at grandstands full of people. Well, that's one thing, because those people are spectators. We're watching the game together. But this is a grandstand full of of witnesses. These are not people that have just turned up to watch someone else play the game. These are people who have successfully overcome. They ran their race, they finished their course. They are actual spiritual athletes who completed faithfully their leg of the race. They ran their race and they finished their course. There's no doubt that when things are tough, man, you want someone who has been through what you are going through to tell you that you can get through it. There's just something about it when someone else has gone through it and you know, man, if they can make it, I can make it too. Now these heroes of the faith in Hebrews chapter 12, they, they made it and, and so can we. You and I can make it. I know we're in challenging times. I know we're in volatile times. I know we're in chaotic times. I know so many of us have been through so much, so much trauma and so many trials and so many tribulations, but the heroes of the faith, they are witnesses. They've gone before us. They have run their race. They have finished their course. They have held on to the faith and they've handed the baton of faith from one generation to the next. They've done it and so can we. So the passage starts with the word, therefore. And of course, when you see the word therefore, you've got to ask the question, what's the question? What's it there for? Now, because this text is actually the culmination of an argument that started in, in back back in chapters 10 and chapters 11. And it's a, it's a call to perseverance in the faith. You know, if you and I are gonna run our race and if we're gonna finish our course in this day, in this hour, then we're gonna learn to endure. We're gonna have to need to endure at all costs because there are challenges that are coming. There are trials that are coming. There are tribulations along the way and we will be in need of endurance. You're not gonna to get to the finish line if you don't learn to endure. We read in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 32 to 36, it writes, but I recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured there's that word, a hard struggle with sufferings, sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion with those in prison and you joyfully accepted the plundering of your property since you knew that you yourselves had better possession and an abiding one. Therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward for you have need of endurance. There it is again, you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive 
what is promised. So the writer then goes on to chapter 11 where he lists the great hall of faith and all the heroes of faith who endured to the end and overcame by faith. He includes people like Abel and Enoch and Noah and Abraham and Sarah and Jacob and Joseph and Moses and Rahab and Gideon and Barak and Samson and David and Samuel and the prophets. And he mentioned that some were tortured and some suffered. And he shows us that faith is not an exemption from trials or hardships or tragedy. The very same faith that enables some to escape trouble, enables others to endure that exact same trouble. So faith and endurance go hand in hand. They go together. And this is a common theme in the book of Hebrews. Faith and endurance, faith and endurance, faith and endurance. After all this, he then starts chapter 12 and says, therefore, therefore, let us also, now that's you and that's me. Therefore, let us also, you and me. We're going to need to need endurance as well. We do not get a pass. If you think the heroes of faith of old had to endure, we don't. That's not the same faith that's been passed on. We will have need of endurance too. That's, that word endurance means the power to withstand pain or hardships. Now, the Greek word for this is ipomoni, hupomene. The word ipomoni means, the word ipo means under and moni means to remain. So basically you and I as Jesus followers in the 21st century, we need the ability or the strength to continue despite fatigue, despite stress or adverse conditions. Anyone thought of the last few years, despite fatigue, stress, adverse conditions. I'd say that is all of us. So we need the capacity to bear up under difficult circumstances. Now, this is not a passive complacency. You know, like when you're sitting there going, I've got to endure a boring lecture or I've got to endure this dinner man with this boring person. I'm not talking about that. That's like, you know, I've just got to endure something. I'm talking about the kind of endurance Scripture is talking about. It's, it's a hopeful fortitude, one that actively resists weariness. Endurance means to remain under because endurance is built under pressure. That's where you get endurance. And you're going, well, Christine, these last few years, I've been under a lot of pressure. And I'm saying, what a gift from God that we get to build endurance. The truth is that we tend to run from any pressure rather than grow through it. The minute something is hard, we want to run from it, but God wants us to grow through it. Now, what happens is we often seek comfort and ease and, and we want the path of least resistance. We're like, man, I don't want this to hurt. I don't want to be uncomfortable. I don't want any pleasure, uh, any pressure in my life. And we just want to tap out and just go, I don't want to do this. But you don't build strength and stamina without resistance. When you're in a gym, if you want to build your, way, your muscles up, you need resistance or you're not going to build anything up. So pressure is your friend and not your enemy. I know we live in a world that is so anti-pressure, but I'm here to tell you, pressure is your friend. It's not your enemy. It's where the character of Christ is formed in you. Anointing and authority comes from a place of pressure, from the press, from the squeeze. It's, it, it's in the pressure cooker and you and I in this fallen world, in life, we're under pressure. We're in like a pressure cooker. And I've not ever met anyone that thinks it's fun to be under pressure. I certainly don't think it's fun. But we can only build endurance through resistance. It's the only place we can build it. So I didn't build my spiritual strength by doing the things that came easy to me, but by overcoming the things that I never thought I could overcome. So it's not by doing the easy things, but actually overcoming the hard things. And we have a generation that God is trying to build you in the furnace and to put fire and steel in your spiritual bones. So that will only be done under pressure. So rather than running from it, you can grow through it. I, I built endurance by staying faithful to Jesus at times when, you know what, I, I felt overlooked. I felt misunderstood. I felt misrepresented. I felt maligned. I felt abandoned or I felt betrayed. I felt isolated or, or lonely or used. 
or tired or just flat out bored or underutilized. But that's the place when you remain faithful at those times, that's where you build the muscle you need to be able to carry the weight you're gonna carry to do the thing that God has called you to do. So you build endurance when you keep going at the point you want to quit. I wanna say that again. We build endurance when we keep going at the point we want to quit. We quit when we think it's too hard and God says, I can give you the strength to go beyond that point. That's where you build endurance. When you get to the point that you can bear it, You're not enduring at that point. You are able to handle it, whether it's emotionally, whether it's spiritually, whether it's physically, whether it's psychologically, you can handle it. But God says, I want you to build endurance. That means, ooh, I'm getting into this zone. Now that's the endurance zone and that's the painful zone because you can't do that in your own strength. You need God's strength. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. I hope you'll share your thoughts in the comments. And if you feel led, please share this video with a friend who needs to see it. Thanks so much for watching.